Hello, my name's Harold Halfdan, and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it would be fun to combine the two. In today's episode, we'll be talking about how to build a historically accurate, easy-to-build Viking longhouse. Now, when I say historically accurate Viking longhouse, I want to be clear that what I'm trying to be is as accurate as possible on the evidence found in excavations. So things like outer walls, where the doors are, the posts, the hearth, that kind of thing are accurate. But for things like the interior decor and decorations, that's more conjecture. And I base those off the museum recreations of longhouses at places like Stonk in Iceland and Trelleborg in Denmark. For those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you might remember my previous episodes where I built the Stonk longhouse, which again is an Icelandic Viking era of turf longhouse, and also might remember when I recreated the Viking fortress at Trelleborg from the reign of King Harald Bluetooth of Denmark. If you haven't been watching the channel for a while, I put the links for both of those videos in the description below so you can check them out. In the video on Trelleborg, I built a number of Viking longhouses that were excavated at the site. Since then, I've received some comments that you might like it if I go more in depth on that historically accurate Viking longhouse and to do the episode more as a build guide. For those of you that might want to incorporate or recreate that Viking structure in your own Minecraft world. So if you end up liking this kind of content, let me know. And I'm very interested in your feedback. And I'm curious about how you either like it or if you don't and if I should stick to my regular type of content. With that out of the way, let's get started. And I'll walk you through exactly how to build one of the Viking longhouses at Trelleborg. This longhouse is 30 blocks long by 11 blocks wide at its widest point. And I say widest point because the width varies as the longhouse is roughly boat shaped. It's surrounded by an eave that circles the whole of the longhouse and is two blocks wide. The longhouse is 12 blocks high at its highest point. For this build, I use the following resources, which I'll put up on screen here. For my build, I chose red banners and beds, but you can decorate yours however you want. I also chose dark oak and spruce as my wood palette, but you can choose any wooden planks or any stair types you want for your walls and roof. I chose the wood types I did because they matched the colors of the wood used in the actual physical historical recreation at Trelleborg in Denmark. And frankly, I like that color scheme. For this build, I started out by building the walls. The longhouse consists of three main rooms, two smaller rooms at either end and a larger room in the center. Each of the smaller rooms were seven blocks wide by six blocks long. However, remember when I said the longhouse was boat shaped. As such, when you're placing the blocks on the side wall, place three blocks and then move out one block and then the other three. That means the inner wall of the small room is nine blocks wide. Notice I left a block open in the center of the wide part of the seven and the nine block sides of the wall. These will be the doorways. I also added stripped dark oak logs into the inner wall so the wall looks like it has some internal support structure. To make the center room, continue the outer wall over three more blocks, then move out one block to continue that general boat shape, and then place 11 more spruce planks, leaving the second to last block open. That also will be a door. Next, move one block back inwards and place four more blocks. Complete this on the other side of the longhouse. The only difference is that the doorway opening should be the second block into the 11 blocks of spruce planks instead of the second to last one. That completes the overall structure of the large middle room. The third room mirrors the first small room on the other side of the large central room. But remember, instead of the outermost width of the wall being three blocks long, you now only need two blocks because you've completed the inner wall. Let's start on putting the walls in place. Simply go around the whole structure and place the spruce blocks to a height of five blocks and place the stripped dark oak blocks where we placed the other ones earlier. So you're basically just raising the whole thing up five blocks. In the end, your house should look like this. So I'm going to come up here to the top and then you can see from the top down. At each of the far ends of the longhouse, place a horizontal layer of the stripped dark oak logs and another line of spruce blocks all around the outside. You notice while I'm doing this, I placed some dark oak planks instead of the spruce planks. And I did that because of how that's going to eventually work as you're looking at that block through the roof line. Now that we've completed the outer framework, we can work on removing all the dirt from the inside of the longhouse and we can start placing the floor. For this, I chose packed mud blocks, but you could use something different you want. I find that brown terracotta or regular terracotta works really nicely as well. And if you want to make your longhouse look more dilapidated, 
or like there are leaks in the roof, you could maybe place mud blocks below where you would imagine the leaks would come from. Likewise, you could imagine that the floor is more finished than just packed earth and place a stone or wood floor. Now that the floor's in, let's place the outer doors. For this, I use spruce doors as I think they look the most medieval of all the other door types. You can see in this area, I put andesite blocks around where the hearth would be, where eventually the fire's gonna go, and then also as the foundation posts to what I'll eventually put oak posts that will look like the supporting structure holding up the interior of the longhouse. From there, let's start working on the eave and the roof. To figure out where the eaves go, start by placing an oak fence post on either side of one of the doors at the end of the longhouse, leaving a one block gap between the wall and where you want to place the fence post. Make the post two blocks high. Pick a direction and place another two block high post every other block and make your way around the whole of the building. To place the eave, place a dark oak block stair over one of the posts and then another one above it on the wall. Continue this around the whole of the structure. Notice when you're placing the stairs on the eave that there's sometimes a little gap in that corner. Don't worry about that because we're going to come back later and correct that when we place the under stair underneath the eave, which we'll do in just a moment. The only tricky bit about placing all these stairs is in the corner sections as it follows that general boat shape. I find that if I adjust where I am compared to where the stair is, as well as clicking on the near side lower corner of the block, that allows it to snap into the stair shape that I want. If it doesn't work, I end up just breaking the stairs and trying again. You see me doing that a number of times here. I end up just breaking the blocks that I mess up on and then replacing them. I then went under the eave and placed an upside down stairs and worked my way all around the whole of the structure. The next part we're going to work on is a roof. Because of the boat shape, the roof is a little bit tricky. But if you start at the bottom of where we stop placing the walls and then place a block on the outside of that wall block and one on the top, we should get you started for each section. There should be one block of visible spruce plank between the top of the eave and the bottom ridge of the roof. For each section, simply work your way up to the roof's peak until the two sides of the roof almost join. Leave one block between the two sides of your roof line, so there's a one block gap. In practice, this means if you start from the narrowest end and work your way around the wider section back to the narrow end, you'll place four stair layers in the narrower section, then five in the next section, followed by six in the widest section, and then back down to five, and then finishing back off with four layers. Note that the roof doesn't go around the whole structure like the eaves did, but only runs along the long side of the longhouse. Leave a one block overhang at the end of the roof line as it sticks out over the narrow side of the longhouse. I also place upside down stairs at both areas that stick out to give it better aesthetics and it makes it easier to actually place the roof. At the top of the roof line into that one block gap, I placed a horizontal beam of stripped oak log that ran the length of the longhouse and followed the peak roof line. Then I placed dark oak slabs over top to give the roof's peak its pointed shape. I also find that placing the dark oak slabs when you're doing each section helps with placing the stripped oak logs because then you have a block in front of it then you can start placing that horizontal stripped dark oak log too and then you just work your way along that roof line. At the end of each roof at either end, you can see I placed an upside down stair to give the roof its distinctive Viking roof shape, which is actually seen in the longhouse at Teleborga. When you're done creating the roof line, fill in these end bits with spruce slabs once you're done with the roof. Now that we're done with the outside, I'm going to give you a little tour of the inside, but before we do that, you can see some changes I made here to the design. I took out some of these stairs here and put in half slabs of dark oak just so that it would look a little less homogenous. I also put a little sheet pen in here uh, with a little bucket of water for them to drink and then imagined what the water would look like if it was raining and water running down the roof line and so added some mud around those areas where it would slosh off and then added just a little bucket of water. Oh, I turned on shaders just so it would look a little bit more pretty. Um, you can see in distance here, there's uh, my build for the tower house. And then you can see in the distance also 
the build for the round the the Irish round tower so let's go in here so this is the first room here uh, that I built in the inside I put some hay there often in medieval and Viking era uh, they would put straw on the ground or what they'd call sweet herbs which when you walk on it it would uh, make the room smell smell nice uh, so sometimes rose petals, and so as you kind of walk on it, it would make it make it smell nice. Also with uh, straw, that could just be swept up later and then, you know, either burned or put in a rubbish bin, and then that would help keep the floors uh, not necessarily clean, but it would it would help uh, allow you to, to kind of pick up all the dirt and mud. Um, put some barrels around here, some candles for light, and then you can see here I placed a spruce trap door and then hung the banners from that spruce trap door so this gives a little bit of as if there's a fabric door here as opposed to uh just always doing a spruce door although you could do a spruce door there there wouldn't be any problem with that um i put a little loft up here you can see that there was a little loft with a ladder and so you can it's a little extra storage some chests um these oak supports I ran on the inside all the way along. So while we have these main post beams holding up the interior, um, as well as I guess our loft, uh, these oak posts, I ran horizontally all the way along here and then joined them up vertically. And you can see where earlier I had mentioned I had put the andesite posts uh, and then the, the oak posts just rest on that andesite. Um, which is just like it was in the archaeological dig. So again, these these horizontal and vertical structures, it just makes it look more supported. Uh, now that we came down here, I put a loom here. Uh, oftentimes in Viking longhouses, there was a loom. Um, and I don't know, imagine a little maybe seating area with a little storage. Um, this could be a little bench. Uh, with some carpet there. I did pick a little bit of a red theme here just to keep it um, all consistent. You could change up any of the decor you'd want or make the benches however you'd want. Put in these 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 beds here with some oak. Um, in the Viking longhouse at Stonk, uh, the, uh, the turf longhouse there, uh, I talk more in depth about how the the sleeping arrangements were, um, as well as uh, what this is, which would be a bed closet for the uh, the kind of the master of the the house. They would sleep in here um, along with their partner, and then this would be locked along with the outer doors would be locked, and this would help protect them if if there was any uh, danger on the inside. Just a little bit more on the decor side, you know, I I put I dropped this down one level from the time lapse. Just so that it would uh, it would work a little better, but I, I kept it where it was. You can see that the smoke goes out the ceiling, and then I brought some chains down. Just maybe they would hang some food here or a cauldron of water that they're heating, um, pot of water. Put some carpets on the ground. Maybe this is a sheepskin. Maybe this is a bear skin. Uh, oftentimes they would keep us, uh, I don't know, uh, livestock, but they they would keep animals in the longhouse. Uh, so I, I put a cow there with some water for the for the cow. Um, maybe this would be a dairy cow where they would milk the cow um, on the inside. And then sometimes though they'd keep hunting hunting dogs on the inside as well. Uh, here I just put a little storage area like this is a little vestibule for coming in from the outside. Maybe taking your uh, your outer winter clothes out. Um, maybe a water bucket to to freshen yourself up. Uh, what's interesting is that there's Anglo-Saxon uh, accounts that that are actually talking about how how bad the Vikings are because they're wooing all the Anglo-Saxon and ladies uh, because they they they're so hygienic they they kept their their teeth clean and they 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 well well groomed and they kept their their hair hair well combed and how that was wooing all of the all of the Anglo-Saxon ladies away from the uh, the Anglo-Saxon men and so. So just a little nod to that. I, I put put some <laughs> put some water. Maybe they're keeping themselves clean out there. So yeah. So I, I put put the red banners on the wall just as a little bit of decoration. And so yeah. So this is the interior here. Um, each longhouse, uh, at least the one at Stonk Longhouse, uh, was estimated to hold around uh, twenty people at its height. Uh, the ones at 
uh, Trelleborga, they could probably at least hold 20, but likely higher than that, 25, 30 people, especially since Trelleborga was, was mostly used as a barracks. Well, that wraps up this build guide on how to build a historically accurate Viking longhouse based on one excavated from Harold Bluetooth Ring Fortress at Trelleborg. Remember, this video was a bit of an experiment for me, and I did it based on your feedback and your comments. So if you like this video, please take the time to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe so you get notified when I post videos. If you didn't like this type of video, I'd love to know that as well, so I can focus on making the content that you most enjoy watching. Thanks, have a great rest of your day, bye for now.